the team to beat in this scenario. I would agree with that. And not just that, there is a situation to be upheld in the fact that the maps are also going to give us give us a pretty good taste of what we're going to have. And I always say that. And of course, this is a best of five. So we have five possible maps underway. The thing about it, though, if you take a look, we are going to have some dicey, dicey maps coming out here. And I really, really do appreciate that one. Fracture and Pearl, of course, not being played. But you go straight to Lotus to kick things off. That is one that for the side of Stony Brook, if they're very happy about that one, I mean, you can see him run it. Not just that. We see the Haven. We see the Ascent split in Icebox as a decider if we need split in Icebox. I'm a little bit petrified in the fact that Stony Brook are on defense for four out of the five maps. Scarlet Knights on the other side are on the attack. But game number one can give us a fairly nice taste of what we do expect. If Stony Brook are really strong on the defense, Scarlet Knights have to figure out how to deal with that for three more maps off the rip. Yeah, I, you know... If I'm being honest, I don't know if it will matter as much about where they start because, like, Haven mm. and Ascent are so, I mean, they're just so even. But Lotus, mm. it certainly can be a, a big deal. And like you said, getting momentum, I think that's the point you were getting to. Momentum is a big deal and in a best of five. So I think we're just about ready to get into the, the map. And it is the match as it will be the start. It is Lotus, actually, not Breeze, despite us seeing Breeze here. <laughs> um, and... I'm looking at things initially, and I would be interested to see if we have the lock-in of this gecko. It is one of, Lotus is one of the maybe two maps, three maps if you count like the random icebox gecko I've seen. That gecko I feel like is pretty viable on. Mm -hmm. I actually really, really like uh, geckos. I like the advantages that are given, and you can actually see Huji kind of hovering it right now. And uh, alongside, wow, the harbor. Okay, so really doubling up on this aggressive clearance uh, that they want to work with. And then you have the raise, of course. But this is great area clearance by the side of the Scarlet Knights. You can go ahead and take a look. The Viper and the Harbor, and then you have the Gecko behind it. This leverages an ability to force at Stony Brook to move where they wish. Of course, Stony Brook are on the attacking side, it looks like, to kick things off. So I believe that's... I, mess, I, I might have messed it up. I do apologize for that one. But on the other side, for Stony Brook, it's very standardized, right? There is no gecko Select to play. There is no agent. harbor to play. It is all just plain, simple. You know, the jet coming out, the breach, the sky, the ever so lovely Killjoy, and then the omen. Yeah, just one note. We do have things flipped flipped around there. It, it ah, there we go. Stony Brook. I was like, what? It was on the left <laughs> on the defense there. Yeah, all good. Just a little bit of a hiccup in the overlay. Regardless, the point stands that you're getting at. There's also something else I want to bring up, and that's that this is a team that has been playing well against top opponents uh, on on this map specifically, Stony Brook, that is, on this composition. The last three times they've played it, all this month, that was against three top 10 teams, basically. They, they played it against Northwood, and they pushed them to overtime on it. I mean, it was 16-14. They barely lost that map. And then at the end of the day, they beat FIU on this map as well. So Sony Brook, they've been looking good, and it's all with this same composition. So I think that whilst maybe at, at the start, you look at it and like, Harbor, oh my god, okay, and Gecko as well, this is something they have comfort on. Mm -hmm. It is very... Uh, it is very natural to them and i'm very very excited to see again this is going to be very hard for scarlet nice to actually run through this is what i was kind of alluding to as well is this situation of well we have to move forward for the scarlet knights on the attack you will have to move uh, in a you know you have to take a choice either you go a b c you go down the line whatever you want to say you are going to have to identify where is the majority share of this util going to be landing for right now stony brook are leaning a bit more towards b and c a little bit further away from the a side as you can see right now, but you know, for what can come in the next few rounds, I do expect Stony Brook to have a nasty, nasty retake. Well, speaking of, they're going to have to start out with a retake because the A site is <laughs> wide open. And the man leading the way, Boga, that's a, a player that I'm expecting big things from. Uh, if we get Scarlet Knights coming out victorious, it'll be because of Boga, most likely. But Tim, it's one of those two players I talked about in the, in the pre-show. Starting out with a double kill, the spike will go down in the meantime. And so you have to appreciate the Scarlet Knight's attempt to go aggressive, but it doesn't work out. Oh, man. And 
This is going to be an unfortunate scenario. Wall is up as well as Prof is just waiting. That's going to be a shot straight through the wall and should glean a bit of information. Stonybrook saying, okay, kind of know what's going on here. Cartier able to find Tim and around the corner. Ethan, headshot, Prof headshots back. And it's a trade back and forth still. Easy does it for Stony Brook Red as that'll be round number one to them. Yeah, and I mean, we already saw the massive amounts of utility that Stony Brook are coming into this game with. You know, the initial point of contact was actually Dizzy getting a blind onto the player trying to move back into tree there. But even beyond that, just the, the positioning of all of the harbor utility, we saw the high tide come out early and that cut off a whole lot for the potential to, to maybe play with that spike or at least find those fights. Scarlet Knights couldn't find anything. And so it will be that first round going to Stony Brook. We'll uh, have to see where they elect to head next because this round, not one where there's a ton of money left in the pockets. The coffers are empty for the Scarlet Knights. It is also the standard, right? This is not a spot that you are un unknown to. You understand that this is what happens after you lose that round. You do have a little bit extra because you do get the plant. But for right now, run empty, see what you can get. And you can see here, a little bit of an angle with that trailblazer coming out from mid from Sniper Red. But a wall goes up, forcing Scarlet Knights to wait once again. Shots ring out across that B side and or C side and saying, okay, okay. Give us a moment with the mound. Mound giving it away, but Ethan, hiding out, saying, I hear some footsteps, let's back up, regroup, they aren't rushing me just yet. Well, that Boombot certainly gave quite a bit of information via Kenji, and so it will be fortunate the Scarlet Knights can rotate away from this. Ooh. We're relatively committed, and that's a classic. Finding Tim, who was sort of out in the middle of nowhere, in all honesty, gets caught. So now the aggression can come back towards this A site where, once again, it's open for business. There's, there's no one left. here to defend. It was only Tim who was in position to do so. And so the spike will get planted for free. Now retake engagement once again being prepped up by Stony Brook. And they're going to have the guiding light moving in. But the oh. recovered weapon is oh. Fruta with a double there. Has a third on the round, and that oh. is the classic coming alive for another. Just one player. That's Huji remain. Three bullets in that bulldog, and it's going to be so difficult with no utility in a 1v3 situation to try and find this. But the first is hit, but the thrifty confirmed by the Scarlet Knights. Gun here. Wow, what a chance. And again, huge props to Fruta. Nasty setup there at the beginning. Again, finding the only defender to hold down the a side at the beginning that was crucial right if you did not get that pick there was no way that scarlet knights were able to run in for free and then following up with another 2k behind it to bring out three in the round it is phenomenal uh really really nice to set up for the rest of the team and now you've thrown stony brook off on the ledge as well you put them in a situation where they do have to save they're in the shares of their own and Scarlet Knights have a chance to run up a 2-1 score line and Cartier and Boga say, yeah, we ain't making any mistakes here. You know, one of the underrated parts of that round from Fruta actually is after that first engagement, he was so very low. Like, the HP was, was minuscule. I don't know what the number was, but it was just sliver on my screen. It, barely visible. And then picks up the two additional cracks with that Bulldog. It's, it's impressive. It's, it's absolutely huge to see a player taking those fights and being willing, having the confidence to, to do so. Tim might get one for the road here. He'll do so. But good adjustment, quick reaction time for the Knights to ensure that it's just that one. Stony Brook, not so successful on their eco, but they do only have to eco the one round, and so with that, to get the guns back out. It's going to be a little bit of a chance for Stony Brook to give us a what for. Again, this is a squad that's sitting here is saying, we're, we're coming in here as a first seed, and this is also our mass map pick, so we understand how to play a little bit from behind, and maybe you're just not so good with the SMG. So... Who knows? What we are going to know is this is going to be the main weapon hold. Of course, they are on light armor, so Stony Brook, they got to be really careful about their angles. And you can see, they're currently holding over there on the A side with only a float over on C and B. Single defenders there. But it's a hard rush coming out. Scarlet Knights prepping a heavy C side attack. And a quick call by Stony Brook to try and chance it out. Is this going to be a rotate back there? Are Scarlet Knights going to suss this out? I mean, they've walked into the A site for free twice. I don't see why a third time <laughs> would be that unreasonable. 
Whereas there is still that harbor in position, that sable, but it is gonna rotate instead of back to A, it's back to B. The little bit of information gathered by Ethan does at least give them something to work with. Information further gathered, and now it's the trailblazer for the other side, but that's what, that's what the problem is. Whenever that Ooh. information comes in, Ethan can catch, can be caught out off guard. Potential here for Kenji will confirm Cartier. And so, despite the fact that the spike will get planted, this is very retakeable, Ooh. Orbital. Oh, very, very easily. And so they're going to try and look. And again, that's what Stony Brook is hoping to do. They've been so lenient in giving sights. That is something that we have noticed. And it's all about the retake. Again, again, first time with guns in hand. And you can see there, Huji is just like, look, now that I have a rifle in my hand, you don't have to worry. That is a quick round retake. Scarlet Knight tied up at 2-2. Two to two. And they do lose guns, so going back into a possible save will be a problem. I think they have enough econ to actually sneak by, but very nicely done by Stony Brook to carry three over. Yeah, they had they had all but one player survive in that anti eco round, so they should be good to buy, and it looks like they will. So, in fact, they're they're doing very well, pretty much mm. maximum purchasing power, uh, even Boga having quite a bit extra to work with, but n nonetheless. Stony Brook, getting back in this early is good. One of the points I was going to bring up but uh, didn't get a chance to is that, yeah, Stony Brook picked this map, sure, and they, they've looked good on it in the past. They've been competitive against good teams and even beat some. Well, Scarlet Knights, this is one of the maps they, they beat you out of Ottawa Garnett on. So they're, they're very familiar as well. This isn't something new to them or outside of their wheelhouse. It's, uh, you know, it, it's it's okay for them no matter what they're just playing here they're in their comfort zone right now they get first map pick they're gonna do okay they're gonna do okay here what is surprising at least scarlet knights taking this one a little bit slower taking their time here and they do have to be worried uh, about that viper's pit that could come out at a drop's notice same with the gecko just waiting to stifle scarlet knights in their advantage but wanting to go for this or boga of course why would you though you already have ults online and the knives could come out in a very fun fashion. But it's just waiting default setup, trying to get something and already a full minute about to be ticked off. Yeah, it feels like a a bit of a situation where both teams are looking to maybe find an aggressive maneuver, find it and take advantage of it. But neither team acquiescing at this given juncture. With that said, regroup I've being had, Charlotte the Knights, they're back and they're headed out left. on to A going to be the Seekers committed as we move forward and those will at least show that there's players in this direction the boom bot sent down but it's only just a small inconvenience for prof on the plant Spike the scarlet planted. knights have their positioning but look at the ultimates despite thrash's position and the potential to lock down does get the one that's free there is a rolling thunder to play defense a little tap maybe for wingman wingman sent back now it's just the uh, one player just the rolling thunder available and it won't be used not yet prop trying to spam wingman getting the defuse and it will be confirmed Nicely done, Stony Brook. They're still showing. This is now, I believe, four out of five rounds where it has been granted a sight sit. Um, looking there. Yes, I do believe so. It is four plans so far, pretty easily. And Stony Brook are more than willing to give it. I, again, I've never seen... Or I, I wouldn't say I've never seen it, but I respect teams that are willing to do that. Saying, we don't want to take that chance of losing a member. We'd rather re-entry with all of our members instead of trying to work with you know a 4v5 or a 3v4 or anything like that you just spectated that way same to the knights though they've identified that even in a situation where they might not have the weapon advantage they're more than willing to press forward they're more than willing to get the plan down and try and work in a retake defense well tim might get caught out here that, that audio cue was given away boga in position boga adjusts mm. great work there from the jet the entry is going towards the scarlet knights and now they have positioning. This is why that retake can be so plausible. Now down a player, Ethan going to have to try and fight desperately to regather that lead that was had. Oh my gosh. And Ethan stuck in this corner. No one checked this back corner, and I wonder if that's going to cause some problems. You can see the flank Stony Brook ready to push two and uh, one on the top end, and then still floating one in B. 
The question mark, Scarlet Knights hunting it out. Boombot goes out, a little bit of a paint tail goes as well, and now that's gonna be a swing. Prof was ready, Huji falls. Kenji though was ready, and now a little bit of a boost, but Kenji's not able to find it, 2v3 now. Stony Brook trying to work their way forward, but one is desperately hurt on Scarlet Knight's side. That paranoia does catch Ethan, but the spike still oh, being Ethan. planted inside of the cove, rather diffused, and Ethan getting that second kill. Oh! Ethan has stepped up, but there's not. Is there going to be enough time? Oh, the spam! Oh. Sable down! The diffuser denied! That is hugely clutch. Despite everyone falling for the Scarlet Knights, they win the round. I will say, I think it would have been very close. It would have been extremely close, but I, I think Stony Brook would have had it if they did not get killed at the very end. What a clutch up kill at the very end. Scarlet Knights, so, so good. Well played on there, and... The problem, of course, still another gun round for Stony Brook side. They're like, all right, listen, we're going to get some revenge for it. But spicy, spicy timing for both these squads. You can see how much they want it. And I expect them to once again be very forward. There it is. A little bit of a knife out, though. Two knives being thrown and missed the rest. And Boga now has to try and walk their way forward. Bisu hype takes one kill. Huji fires back. Yeah, but it's not going to be a recoverable position for Wingman. This given juncture, you can see Dizzy in that position as well. Four on four. Scarlet Knights, one thing that I've noticed that they've done pretty well is putting themselves in positions to make some presence in most of the areas of the map. This uh, could be a bit dicey here in a moment. Is the A site being called clear by Fruita, but you can see there is an, an inkling by Tim. Tim's right here, ready to walk forward and should be hearing audio yeah. cues in just a moment. Well, as soon as the doors open, will for sure. And there we there go. It is. There we go. It's going to be, ooh, I was thinking maybe they would commit to that, but instead it's going to be reckoning. On the other side, Stony Brook, they're just pushing back. They left. know they've heard the audio cues. Of the Scarlet Knights, and this has given time for the entirety of the team to box in the Scarlet Knights. Ooh, and the box hurts so, so much. Beautiful reckoning play, Fruta. I mean, might be able to make something happen. Only two, though. Still, very nicely played by Stonybrook. We keep saying it over and over again. They're a team that is more than willing to give space to take more later. And that one, they were able to get the drop before the plant even went down. Very, very nice job on their end. Scarlet Knights, though, you go ahead and say, hey, okay, ultis are down. Let's try and wrap back, even with only a couple pistols. <laughs> How does Huji already have Thrash again? Didn't he use H Huji, it? Huji got like a 3k uh, each round prior before. Like, Huji's been a monster. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I just, I was like, he used it just like last round, it felt like. And You, you are like correct. That. You yeah. are correct. <laughs> a little less than ideal, the, the purchase for the Knights in this round. And I love that Stony Brook kind of smelling blood in the water have taken a more aggressive Ooh. strategy, but that aggression can certainly be denied and has been there. Fruta delivering once again. Oh. Close range with the Marshall is Boga on the secondary frag. Boga no. for another. That Marshall, it's singing, and it's singing a song of death and devastation for the oh, likes no. of Stony Brook. Tim will oh. get two for free. <laughs> That's not only going to be the spike dropped, but now a possibility for success as this round has gone back and forth player standing. and and right back again beast you hype finds a reloading tim oh my gosh vincent what is this round we are on round number eight and both teams come out with solid solid plays leaning in favor of the scarlet knights it started out with a fantastic setup by bolga and on a save round no less a thrifty thrifty setup you had one hero rifle and hero it did Ethan on the back end sees one, but Fruta ready to slow down this pace. Able to shoot out that one Nano Swarm. Second one's taken out, and uh, and uh, rightfully so. Fruta's like, give me back my util. Give me, give me it back. I'm gonna keep it about Fruta has so many kills through walls. It's a little alarming. There's <laughs> like quite a few of those kills. Clutched up that that previous round. Remember that kill on the Sable? Mm -hmm. Had the Cove initially in position, but then once the Cove was down, it was basically free shooting and you know remember when i said that stony brook they had the weapon advantage yeah, yeah 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 that's that's no longer the case not only do they lose that weapon advantage by losing that last round but now they're the ones on the tough buy and well 
they seem to be interested in staying aggressive at the very least or th that is towards a temporarily fall back more towards the b area now but still there has been a lot of a hits and i guess stacking the site isn't uh, isn't really unheard of mm -mm. Not at all, and you actually see the rest of Sony Book actually floating between the three. So it's, they are, well, I, I would say actually two, not three. B's been like, okay, have one defender and then a float from either C or A. Sony Book have actually been willing to rotate their members, and I really, really do appreciate that. Always trying to keep them guessing, keep the Scarlet Knights guessing on where exactly I'm is the majority share of the forces going to be. With the information being known once again, though, that is going to be the wall stable reading it, and that's going to be the secret as well. To smoke out a few more members of Stony Brook, and it's going to be Kenji with a beautiful shot. The showstopper brings in one, but Prof was ready, and Cardia and Bolga fire off as well. Headshots galore for everyone as well, and that is Kenji with the share trying to do a bit more, but Bolga sends him to the grave, and it is Tim left alone, and Cardia headshots as well. Heads all around for the Scarlet Knights as they pull away 5-4. This has been great from the Scarlet Knights just all around, considering that that was a very clean round indeed. It's good to see them build some economy up to this one as we approach the end of the half. There's just a few rounds left here. They're actually still in the pocket for Huji. Like to maybe, I mean, that could be used early on or could, could be very effective for a retake. It's hard to know what the right decision is, but what I do know is that the ultimate advantage is clearly there for Rutgers at the moment. Here. And back to the A side. This has just been such a very strong approach for them. Spike here, three towards A has been the standard. And then from there, figure out how to rotate after putting pressure elsewhere on the map. It has been their bread and butter. They did it in the early stages. That's why we saw Scarlet Knights run up a very, very nice start. And then Stony Brook took over uh, around the mid. So, you know. They, they are still testing it, but they don't want to make it too obvious. And once again, as you see, Stony Brook, they floated on A first, and now they stacked on C. Now going back with three, hiding all the way back in spawn. Saying, hey, that's actually where we're going to sit. But this is a good call. There goes the lockdown. It is forcing Stony Brook to answer back on this B side. And it is going to be a full push. Sometimes we see the fake. It is going to be that B side plant, and Stony Brook going to fight inside of the alcove. Right there. Are going to be forced into it as they have to look at the retake. This B side, it's brutal to hang on to, though. Use the lockdown mm -hmm. to get onto the site and get the spike planted. And putting themselves in good positions, at least Scarlet Knights are. Trailblazer. All right, that was Thrash finding a little bit of information, but does get destroyed, so might not be the best of situations. As now, first of the Nano Swarms goes out. COVID decision allows Sable to potentially get halfway. Will do so. Oh. Now has to take an additional point. Oh, Another frag, and Boga has another, but the defuse continues, and it will go through. Stony Brook, they might not have found the frags necessary to win the round, but they sure enough found the defuse. These teams are going so dicey back and forth, right? I think that's the second time we've seen them go down the wire, and this time it was actually Stony Brook that won. Remember, last time, Scarlet Knights were able to find that pinch at the very, very end. So well done in their uh, in their awesome awesome facet. So excited to see what else they can do. We are in the final two rounds of this half, and I couldn't ask for a better time. As you can see, we are into a little bit of a pause. So you know we'll we'll get and see. And as you can see, I am in the corner of the room. Let me let me adjust that just real quick. Whee! There we go. I fly fly right back in. <laughs> Indeed, and you know what? We're gonna keep you on the edge of your seat just for one moment whilst we get this handled. We're gonna throw to a quick break here. And we will come back in just one moment.